Okay, so we've uh, overclocked our GPU and now it's time to overclock our CPU. Um, let's see, we'll uh, jump over here and look online. Again, we're looking at the Samsung Galaxy S4. Again, older phone, but the principles are the same. The, the kernel that you're working on, the file names will be different. But I just want you to remember, you can look up about the phone, like we're using the M919, and we look up the tables. We see what the system on a chip is. It's that 8064AB, and the CPU is a Qualcomm Crate 300. So we take that information, and then we can go look at our files. I'll jump over here. Uh, so we're in our, our uh, JF Arch arm, and we're going to jump down to this mock MSM. And we look around. We're looking for the CPU clock tables, and those are going to be in this ACPU clock file. And we're looking for uh, the uh, 8064. And so that's this one right here. Of course, we're going to open it up and diffuse so we can take a look at that. So ACPU clock 8064. And we're going to have uh, mine and then the, the default stock kernel for comparison here. So we see a bunch of tables. And we'll go to the top here so we can see what's going on. After the includes is kind of a, a set of um, you know default variables here. Uh, we see that we have the uh, voltage controls for low, nominal, and high. Um, we see uh, you know some maximums and some some defaults, and then we see the scalables for CPU of uh, zero, one, uh, two, and three, and then under that the level two cache. So this is you can see it's like crate zero, crate one, crate two, crate three, um, you know, and then and then the variables for the crate zero memory, crate zero dig, crate zero HFP uh, LL. Excuse me. So it's the 8064AB. We know we're in the right place. That's really helpful. And then we have a whole bunch of these tables. And how do we know which table to look at? Well, we know this is a 2 gigahertz phone. So it should be the table that starts, you know, with a voltage that goes up or a frequency that goes up to, you know, um, to 2000. And so you see you have um, the left column is 30, 384 that's the frequency and uh, then this right column this is uh, looking at the um, voltage for that frequency so here we have PVS 0 uh, 2000 megahertz and which is kind of a misnomer notice that it's only 1890 but uh, you know that's how they like to cheat you um, and you see that it's using 128.75 millivolts uh, to achieve that um, frequency. So we have this PVS0, um, PVS1, um, PVS2, uh, and all of these three, four, five, and all the way down to six. And essentially, as we look through here, um, what we're seeing is the different uh, quality control versions of that chip. So they've designed a, a performance value for that chip and it says that for a 6, 1890 megahertz can be run at 110 millivolts. Um, but for a PVS5, 1890 uh, takes more millivolts and so on and so forth all the way up until it just requires more and more millivolts. And so when they when they bench test the chip, they assign this PVS value to it, so you know which table it's supposed to use in the kernel. So essentially, you have to change each one of these to affect every possible um, phone that was made with one of these chips. So. Um, You know, there's there's several different uh, things in here that we could do um, for our changes, but what we're going to work on changing is we're just going to change the uh, the maximum frequency, and instead of being 1890 uh, at 110 millivolts, for instance, for this PVS6, uh, we're actually going to step it up to um, 1998. Uh, so we're going to give it a five percent increase. 
which is pretty significant. But this is, uh, this is you can see what I've done over here, and uh, we're just going to transfer that over. But notice that we're also uh, not only increasing the frequency, but we're going to increase the voltage as well. If you increase the frequency without increasing the voltage, then essentially what you're doing is you're overclocking and uh, doing a um, undervolting at the same time, which I've done in the past, but you have to be really careful and you have to know what values are acceptable. If you're not really sure, uh, you should start by stepping it up at least a little bit. Um, and again, I recommend really small changes at a time because uh, because this is pretty much the one and only way that you can actually burn up your phone. So if we save this table to say, hey, that's that's the new maximum frequency and the new maximum uh, millivolts that run that frequency, then uh, then our kernel can utilize these to uh, to um, you know choose higher frequencies. So we're going to make clean. And we're going to make our boot image with MKA boot image. And we're just going to let that run. That's going to take, you know, uh, oh, five or so minutes, maybe six. And while that's running, we'll just, uh, we'll just talk a little bit about these frequency tables. So we notice in, uh, in the one that I did, I took the old max frequency and moved it to the next lower slot. So that way, if you're using uh, something like Kernel Auditor or some other app like that, you could uh, still manually cap yourself at the default frequency and not use the overclock frequency. Um, so obviously, you know, uh, we see this is the 8064. Um, you know, when you're looking online, you could look up the different uh, commits that other people have done, you know, to see kind of what the what um, changes other people have made, what's a safe route to go. Uh, you could Google that 8064 and see if some other people have made some commits maybe on GitHub that are related to that. Um, just a lot of options to do some research to see what would be uh, appropriate for the changes you want to make. But the big thing is you make your changes and you uh, you test it out and you thoroughly test it before you let anybody else uh, use it. So, um, also, uh, you know, here we just changed the uh, the maximum, but you can actually add new levels to the table if you uh, do that properly. It does take a little bit more uh, effort than what we've done here, and so we're not going to go into that today, but. I just want you to know that's also an option that you can use. Um, yeah, so make make your changes, make them small, do a lot of testing, and uh, and test through through the full range of uh, of you know um, frequencies when you do these sort of things. Uh, another thing too is you know what governor you use is going to make a big difference on um, the utilization of these. You know if you're using like min max, for instance, it's always using either the minimum frequency or the maximum frequency, and so all the frequencies in between really don't matter at all. So definitely something to think about as far as you know spending a lot of time changing each and every individual frequency. You could kind of, in my opinion, waste a lot of time working on that. Uh, when you really only need to focus on one or two frequencies that your phone normally uses when you're running. Um, if you have a tool like Kernel Auditor, a uh, really great uh, application, highly recommend it. And it'll pull some statistics and show you what uh, frequencies have been used, how much of the time that your phone has been on. And so that'll give you a good indicator for which uh, which voltages that you might want to undervolt and which frequencies you might want to bump or move. Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe upping a slightly lower frequency by a few megahertz will keep it from having to scale to the next frequency. So that's uh, that's something to consider as well. So hopefully this gives you a good idea and points you in the right direction. Every kernel is going to look a little different. The file that you use is going to be named something different. The tables are going to look slightly different. 
um, but hopefully that'll give you something to uh, you know something to work with because uh, the principles are going to be the same no matter what uh, what it is that you're looking at um, these these top default values you probably don't want to change those unless you really have a good reason or know why you would want to change those at the top here um, you know uh, the engineers who design this stuff are are actually pretty intelligent people and uh, I definitely uh, would be hesitant to just change something just because but again you know trial and error actually can lead you to a lot of fun discoveries and things to uh, to work with so uh, just be aware that you know making these changes could adversely affect your phone in a permanent manner especially once you start working with voltages and you start working with frequencies so do be careful uh, also be sure to check out the amount of heat that your phone is generating and make sure that it's not getting too hot for um, you know for normal use and that's something you really have to kind of test over time while running some heavy applications and some light applications to see if there is in fact any difference so just a couple things to think about um, while this build finishes up and uh, I'm going to quit rambling now because I'm pretty positive this is going to build successfully and I'll just let you, you know, view it out on the video here. So, Yep, there we go. Make completed successfully and now you just have to flash it to your phone and uh, test it out.